Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to take a look at the first 10 years of the Takahashi Corporation, at least as a telescope manufacturer. I want to look at the history of Takahashi telescopes from the very beginning. Let's start in 1967. Uh, they made the Takahashi TS-65, 65 millimeter, fairly ordinary telescope, at least as um, far as Takahashi's go. Uh, kind of robust, uh, as all Takahashi's thereafter have been. Uh, six, 65 millimeter, 900 focal length on an equatorial mount. Nice telescope, very robust telescope. In 1968, they made a um, an Altaz mount for this. Now the Altaz mount is quite unusually strong. It's a really, really robust Altaz mount. I'll show you this up close. I'm going to show as many of these scopes as, uh, as possible. I will show you in person with live examples. In 1969 they made a TS-100 reflector. It's uh, an F-10 reflector, 4 inch. Uh, Again, typical Takahashi robustness with the whole thing. 1970, they made the TS-65D. Now, this is an innovation. Takahashi was really, really starting to become competitive with Nikon and Goto Kogaku. And uh, they did this, 65 1,000 millimeter triplet semi-apochromet. Uh, so it's a big telescope and it's on a very very big mount too so it's it's quite a, a big deal um, they also made the ts80 which is a, another triplet semi apochromat f15 on a d mount the d mount is also quite substantial i think it's the same mount as this one 1971 uh, they came out with the TS-50, which is kind of a smaller, uh, almost portable. I mean, <laughs> for Takahashi, it's portable, I guess. Anyway, it's a smaller telescope, and you could carry that uh, aboard a, maybe take it on a train or on a bus or something. Uh, so it's a more or less portable telescope. They also made the TS-65S. This is the same triplet semi-apochromat only it's in the 68 millimeter tube and it's on a less robust mount uh, so it's a, it's a little bit of a, a step down but i think they were compromising and making something that was more accessible to the masses in 1972 here we have a ts80 triplet apochromat now this is a big deal this was the first Apochromat made in Japan. I mean, uh, Zeiss had been making Apos, triplet Apos for many, many years and, uh, and Cook before them. So there were triplet Apos had been around, but this is the first one made in Japan and made for uh, commercial sales uh, in Japan. There weren't too many of them that made it to the United States. I'm lucky enough I have one and I'll be showing it to you. They also made the TS-100 Reflector, which is uh, just a fairly ordinary kind of a reflector, very much like the previous one, uh, with a couple of minor modifications. Here's another big innovation. In 1973, they made the TS-65P, which is uh, a very portable, almost like the TS-50 in terms of portability. It's a triplet semi-apochromat, so it's got really, really good color uh, correction 65500 uh, very fast triplet in 1974 they came out came out with the TS 40 H which is a, uh, a very portable ultra lightweight I mean this thing is uh, feather light compared to most Takahashi instruments and it's something very portable that you can carry out easily on a bus or a train with your camera and go out and do uh, astrophotography in the field. Uh, very big deal in Japan at the time. 1976, they came out with the TS-65V. Again, this is a bit of a, a kind of a, a step towards 
popular the popular market and they made something a little bit smaller uh, 65 millimeter aperture with a little bit smaller mount uh, a very nice fits in a nice niche that way 1977 here comes the big revolution the first fluorite apochromat the TS 90 F uh, quite a big deal and uh, Takahashi has not the world hasn't been the same since they they made the first one of these Anyway, that's where we'll end our history uh, as far as early Takahashi, the first 10 years.